It may have been the ultimate force of nature. The Hypercane, a compact megastorm just a fraction the size of a hurricane, but theorized to pack a punch never seen before. Could hypercanes have been responsible for killing 75% of all life on Earth? The hypercane may be a theory, but is there evidence that this superstorm even existed? The place to look can be found all around the world, a one-inch layer of sediment which has become the key to understanding what some scientists consider the world's largest crime scene. In the KT boundary lies the physical evidence of an asteroid strike over 65 million years ago. But does the KT boundary also hold clues to suggest hypercanes formed after the impact? Well, that's a really excellent question, and we've given some thought to that. Can we find proxy evidence for hypercanes in the geological record? It's possible to get some idea of where these uh, hypercanes would have been impacting the coastal regions, and then to go and look if the geologic record is there to find uh, some signature uh, of those events. One possible signature could be the fuel that fires the engine of a hypercane, salt water. Warm ocean water is the key to a hypercane's power. Could the salt from the ocean have left marks in the geological record? The interesting thing, of course, is that you would ingest a lot of salt into a hypercane. Now, the salt that goes up into the stratosphere may not come back down as raindrops, and it might get spread globally and come back down. But even if an elevated salt content could be found, important questions still linger. The challenge, I think, would be how do you separate the deposits of a hypercane from the deposits of a tidal wave? Even Professor Carrie Emanuel realizes the chances of finding definitive proof are slim. The problem with salt is it tends to get dissolved and washed away. It might have happened whether it gets preserved in the geological record, I think is somewhat dubious. Science has yet to find the one telltale factor that could distinguish a hypercane in the geologic record. And although the evidence for hypercanes remains elusive, the question becomes, could hypercanes and other superstorms be part of our future? Warm ocean waters are the key ingredient to forming hypercanes and hurricanes and many scientists see more severe hurricanes as a reality to come. As the world warms up, the potential for stronger hurricanes increases. So one plausible scenario is you actually have fewer hurricanes, but the few that you did get, some of them would be very strong, stronger than hurricanes today. But determining which hurricanes will become killers and which ones won't is still an elusive art. In fact, scientists don't know exactly what makes some storms form into hurricanes and others simply fade away. We're very good now at tracking where hurricanes are going to go, but, but still challenged at determining how strong they're going to get. You know, what is that it factor? We can't do hurricanes in a laboratory. We have to build computer models. Those of us even who do computer modeling aren't terribly confident about those models unless they can be compared rigorously with nature. It may be impossible to recreate a fully formed hurricane in a lab, but at the University of Miami, Brian House is using new tools to observe the dynamics that occur between the ocean and the atmosphere during hurricanes. If ocean temperatures are getting warmer each year, this research could help determine which hurricanes in the future have the potential to explode in force. The tank can create winds of up to 134 miles per hour, leading to realistic hurricane conditions that can be tracked in a controlled atmosphere. Those winds that we can generate here will interact with the water surface in the same way that the winds in a hurricane will interact with the water surface. We can look at detail at where the air and water meet and learn about how things move across that boundary. 
The boundary between the wind and the waves is where heat transfer and friction take place, key components to determining a hurricane's strength. The lab experiments have led Brian House to a new conclusion about how intense hurricanes form. It used to be thought that the friction increased in a certain way very, very quickly with, as the winds increased. And what we've been able to measure here is showing that that's true up to a certain point. And then the ocean surface becomes actually flattened by the strong winds. A flattened ocean surface leads to less friction and an eye-opening outcome for Brian House. That's been an important result because then it allows more intense hurricanes to develop than you might have thought previously. These kinds of discoveries have been made possible by new optical technology. Lasers and remote sensors allow scientists to examine the properties of the water without physically touching it. What you see behind me is a particle image velocimetry technique for using laser sheets and particles in the water and this is a way that you can map the flow right up close to the air-sea interface. These are little 50 micron particles that we've placed in the water, uh, millions of them, so that we can track where each little piece of the water is going. That can then tell you the slope of the surface at that same point. And from that height and those slopes, you can then determine the whole wave spectra, the whole characteristics of the ocean surface. Scientists are now beginning a new era in hurricane research and getting one step closer to predicting how severe a storm may become.